to join before we go live uh, before we start proper our speakers are already in the room and this promises to be an exciting time right discussing design it generally development and uh, the journeys of those that have come before uh, emerging opportunity in digital tech um so if you have mind-boggling questions before now that you've been battling with this is um the right platform to ask those questions we'll be hearing from subject experts right and they will be able to you know put us in the right perspective in the right direction point us in the right direction to go so if you have questions please type it on the uh chat box speakers will take questions after the two speakers of the day have presented so you don't forget your questions you can just um, ask your question put it on the uh, chat box so uh, when the presentations are over the speakers can pick up the question and answer and answer accordingly uh, if you want to ask your question directly we will also make room uh, for that yeah um we also encourage everyone here to share on social media using a hashtag uh digital tech if we can use the hashtag digital tech um for every tweet we put up on social media just to let people know that this conversation is going on and they can join in right you can share with your friends so let's use the next uh, five to ten minutes to share with our friends share on uh, social media and um, on our handles WhatsApp status, just to get the word out there that um, Bank of Dev Center is hosting a digital tech um, event currently, right? And everybody can be part of it. So if you can do that for us, we'll be grateful. Uh, our first speaker will come up at about uh, 12, 15, 12, 16, there about. Uh, so for those that are early bed, thank you for joining early. Uh, we'll soon get on our way, right? Thank you very much, everyone, once again.
All right. Once again, welcome to this edition, uh, the April edition of Bincom um, ICT Career Talk. Right. We do this every third um, Saturday of the month, of each month, um, where we bring great minds, subject matter experts to come tell us about their journey, teach us about their path, and give us insight on emerging technology especially in the tech ecosystem, things that are happening, trends we should look out for, uh, directions we should take as, as young entrepreneurs or young or enthusiastic uh, tech developers. And that is what this platform is created for. If you have um, questions, you need clarity, uh, you need mentorship on your tech journey, or if you want to start a tech journey per se, or any business uh, as, as the case may be relating to tech or within the tech ecosystem, right? Um, this is why we created this platform to be able to um, give you direction, to be able to give you clarity, to be able to point you to mentors and people that can put you through, right? This is the um, April edition, right? And we um, quickly run through. We're discussing emerging opportunities in digital tech. We have two great speakers in the house uh, who would be sharing their journey with us and who will be mentoring us for the next uh, one hour or so uh, that this conversation will be holding. So feel free to uh, network, feel free to ask questions, even though you're just asking for their Twitter handle. Um, register your presence, register your, 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 your voice in the conversation also, um, write down questions. It's a very interactive session. Uh, the speakers will be presenting for like 30 minutes each. And um, after that point, the floor will be open to every other person to speak, right? Or to ask questions as the, as the case uh, may be. Our first um, speaker, again, before I start, uh, this is brought to you by Bingham Dev Center. Bingham Dev Center is a technology space that enables and empowers young individuals to develop their talents in tech. Uh, as the case may be. Uh, depending on the area of tech you want to focus in, we have a variety of uh, packages uh, that you can learn from, right? From, you know, from PHP to data science. Uh, we have programs uh, from Bincom uh, Academic to Bincom Global uh, programs, Global Tech program. Uh, you can take advantage of any of our opportunity. You can check our website out to know more about these information. And also before the conversation end, I'm sure um, we'll also run down some of the points or some of the uh, avenue you can reach out to us on Twitter, on uh, Instagram, on Facebook, and uh, indeed our uh, company website, right? So take advantage of these opportunities. They are very important, even if it's coming at a relatively um, cheap price to you, but it is very, very important. The world we live in, in, in today is a fast moving, a fast developing world. And if you are not tech savvy, uh, you might be uh, playing catch up for a long time. Uh, tech is literally redefining our world. And um, it is important that we, as an individual and, and, and as a collective, we should you know, champion one skill, one talent, even if it's project management in tech, we should champion one skill, one talent in tech because Tech is the future. If you if you listen carefully to the news today, we it's all about digital currency, and which is built on the foundation of, of tech, right? The concept of digital currency is traced back to you know technology, as you know. So yeah, this is one of our community events. Welcome again. Um, I just want to say, um, please pay attention. Please be invested here. Yeah. Uh, and feel free to ask question at any time. Just type the question on the chat box and the speakers will pick them up when they are done with their presentation. It's going to be very interesting, right? And uh, we bank on everyone here to be very active and committed to this, at least for the next one, one hour, right? Uh, our first speaker today, um, his name is Otobong Koko. Otobong, are you in the house? Please just say hi. Yeah, I am. I am. Hi. Hi, everyone. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. Um, 
Otto Bong is um, he's a product design expert uh, with many years experience in uh, UX, user experience and business strategy. You know, he has worked in the fintech and uh, financial sector, you know, with many or with two of the leading uh, financial institutions in Nigeria. He's currently with one of the largest bank or largest bank in Africa, United Bank of Africa, which we all know as UBA. Uh, it's currently the team lead of design and engineering uh, at, at that particular bank, right? He's, his experience, I'm sure you will find out when you start uh, talking, uh, um, start from front end developers, front development to digital, um, products, managing digital product, designing digital products, and um, product design generally, right? And I expect that if you have any question around this uh, path, you know, you're in the right room, right? Uh, through through collaboration and with stakeholders and business owner, you know, he has been able to uh, design some of, some of his amazing work, which he will be telling us about. He has been able to build innovative products uh, in corporate Nigeria, uh, and I'm sure in his private practice also. Uh, so without further ado, please make welcome for the first time, um, Otobon Koko uh, to Bingham Death Center Career Talk, ICT Career Talk for April. Uh, let's make him feel welcome, everyone. Wave at him. Yeah, thank you. So it's, it's, it's up to you now. Please take All us right. on that journey. You've been... Yeah. Let me let me share my screen. Okay. Can you all hear me? Yes, I can. All right, awesome. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Fantastic. Awesome. All right. Thank you, everyone. Um, I'm pleased to be here. I'm happy and excited to be here as well. One thing that uh, Muri did not mention was that we're in the same school together, but uh, <laughs> we, we went to the same journey university together, and and he's a great guy as well. Then I I worked with Bade, who's also a speaker in today's event as well. While I was in Sterling Bank, so we come a long way, and I'm excited to be here to share my experience and also encourage and also motivate and also um, plant a seed in the minds of people who are here, which um, if we can record this event, because it can be useful tomorrow, maybe somebody wants to get on to share it out because I actually um, read, wrote down my, my slides and I prepared it and I was ready in the last um, 30 minutes. So I won't take a lot of time or we'll focus in just one area where we'll, we'll, we'll learn a lot today. So thank you. Um, so I like to outline um, how today's conversation will go. Um, First of all, I'll talk, just take um, one or two minutes to talk about me, although um, Modi already said the stage ready, I won't take much time there. Then we'll focus on today's discussion and I title it, what, where, how, and when. Again, this session is about emerging opportunities in digital technology. So if you ask now, what are the emerging opportunities? Where can I find them? How can I get into them? And when can I get started? That is how what I mean by that, then I'll, I'll leave some time for some questions as well. Um, now, a little bit more about me. Um, I'm a digital product designer. Um, um, I'm, currently, I'm currently working with the UBA right now. I lead the design team, then I also co-lead um, a squad of 23 people comprising of engineers, product managers, and, um, and testers. I've worked about 11 years professionally and I've been eight years focused on user centered design, building product and crafting delightful experiences. Um, I once, um, I've, I'm still teaching in Utiva. Uh, I took a product design course in Utiva and I mentor with ADP lists. I'm not here to advertise all of them, but um, Bincom is a great place. So well, just to give you feedback of my background, ADP list is also a mentorship platform that I joined in LinkedIn to mentor designers all, all around the world. In my spare time, I love woodwork. I do DIY projects. So um, I once saw an article that says, have a second career 
And that's my second career. I'm going to woodwork. I won't give much background about that as well. But I love playing games to play my catch and watch videos, uh, movies occasionally. I won't spend much time again. How I got into and why you should listen to me today. And uh, I started as a visual designer, got into front end development. I saw an opportunity in um, visual design about 2003. And it was born out of curiosity, born out of solving problems, and born out of seeing things not being organized. So it, it pushed me into it. But when we got into university, 2004, 2005, uh, I had opportunity to have access to internet connection in the school, and I started learning self um, self training myself on front end development. When I graduated in 2010, I got a, my job before my NYC. I'm saying this to inspire people. Maybe if you're listening, you know you're out of school or uh, you, you're just about to finish or just finish, it's not to intimidate you, but just to show you that it's possible. Going to tech is possible and it's doable. So uh, I got my first job in 2010 in microfinance bank, where I started as a web um, developer and managed a website, build small internal applications for them. Then I came along Google in 2012, um, coming to Nigeria for the first time to talk about user experience. That's why I got discovered that I've been practicing most of these things but I didn't even know that it was a career and a skill one can actually hone to, to grow. So I jumped right in again as a self-taught person, get her names of the resources available that I can find and learn. In 2016, I moved to Lagos to join Sterling Bank as a UX engineer. And where that's where my product design career actually started. One of the products I built in Sterling Bank is Spectre, um, a lending platform uh, where you can get um, loan in five minutes without committing the documentation or going through the paper processes. And just a, a month ago, I heard that they have made about a hundred billion dollars in error in disbursement and 0.1 MPN loans. I'm still proud of that product and, and, and it's doing something well. Then I decided to educate myself, got into uh, um, got to Columbia Business School to, to take a training in digital business strategy because I found out that without business, without a buying set of business, you can't just be a techie. And, and succeed. So I had to just shift my thinking towards that, not just being a, a, take, a take alone. Then today, I started at 20, 2020 January, I joined um, UBA, where I lead the design team and also co-lead um, engineering team as well, as I already mentioned. So below are some clients I work with. I work with a startup in the US, Cash on to build a, a, um, an e-commerce platform. Then I'm also a mentor in ADP list. All right. So I like to always start with a quote when I want to do something, just to encourage people who are here. The future doesn't happen. We build it. You don't just, um, it doesn't just happen. You have to build your future. You have to imagine where you want to be to where you want to go and walk towards it. I'm, I'm going to address a few things to connect the dots about this quote that I actually found online very interesting. And the questions I will address today, which I know that in a lot of people's mind, um, are four questions, which I, I said, what, how, where, and when, is what skill can I acquire or transition into with or without a degree? And that's why we are here. How can I amplify my skills and presence if you're already in there and you're already doing something and you're wondering how can you amplify your skills? How can you get known? I'm gonna talk about it as well. Where can I find resources to learn? If you're still looking for resources to learn, being coming is a great place to start. And also I'm going to share online places you can also learn and find out these opportunities. Now, when can I start? So again, this is emerging opportunities in digital tech. I'm just going to share my experience and you're going to have to just connect the dots from what I'm going to say today and all that. Now, I'd like to start with this question to set some stage and based on what you need to have to be successful in this digital space which I call it passion. They love definition of passion out there, a lot of definition of Google has a various definition, but here's how I define passion. Passion is anything you can do with ease, without pay, and brings you joy. Now, don't get me wrong that um, you're gonna do these things for free. No, you're not gonna do this thing for free. Our passion trans inspires us to create things. Our passion uh, inspires us to go into things, finesse the technology around us, and make money from them as well. So. It has to be driven by passion. Even if it's going to be a skill or education you're going to earn, it has to be driven by passion. 
Now, what you need to know to set also the stage is that you, again, I've mentioned passion, you need to have resilience, you need to have the tools around you, and you need to create time. And I have to warn that going to take, digital take is difficult only for those who are passionate. Don't try to say, I want to enter it for the money. And it's also hard, but it requires a great deal of effort based on the four things I've mentioned. So getting the tools, you just have to ensure that you get the tools to be out there. You can't be on your phone and be on social media and expect to make a lot of money. You have to, you have to invest in it and get the tools, work to it towards it. You have to also push yourself, be the passion, be resilient about it, and you have to make time and create a great, it, 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 it's a lot of effort to get there. But this is not to encourage you, but just to set the stage to understand. So you won't look as if everything they were saying here today is just free and all that. Now, one factor I also like to set as well is that don't go into tech because of money. Please don't go into tech because of money. Yes, you heard the unicorns of today, the floater waves and the space tech getting deals or selling their company for billions. Don't let those numbers make you go in. Those guys, they paid the price, they're resilient, they, they, they created the time to do what they have done today to succeed. So you also can do it. And if you go in for the money, you any to any tears. And what I mean by any any tears is that you have hopes that are not realistic because you've not set the foundation to push yourself out there. Now, again, um, yeah, I just want to set that fact on ground so that um, you have that basic understanding as I go on. Now, the next question is: What skills can I acquire or transition into with or without a degree? Now, if you Google in these questions in Google, you see a lot of things. I actually did research before when I was told to speak. I did 2019 skills, 2020 skills, 2020 skills, 2021 skills. They were all different. The things that are changing. You're now in an economy of, um, we are now in a, um, should I use the era of remote working? So it means that a lot of things will happen. It means that um, a lot of things will change. A lot of ways we're going to work will, will, will be different. So I listed out what I found on Google, which I don't want to focus on all of them. But again, again Moody and the team are here. They can uh, amplify on them and tell you what they can help you um, acquire from their academy, from their place, from their um, company. But I highlighted uh, the things on green to stand out on the things that are actually trending. What are actually the things that are uh, uh, popular right now. Now, again, I mentioned what resonates with you. So what I mean by what resonates with you is this. You have to think of, look at research and all the items on green and ask yourself, is this what I want to go into? Is this what I want to do? The passion has to come out and from you and say, okay, I think while I was a child, I was good with numbers. It means you can be a data scientist. I think when, when I was a young person, I used to solve problems means you can go into UI, UX for product design. Then if you have maths background or you're just curious, you're just curious. Mobile development is a place. If you if problem solver, again, product management, management is a, a place. Salesforce and CRM solutions, the current one, you can learn about them. Then the most recent ones are the no code platforms, which you don't need to know how to write codes, but you can build applications out, places like Webflow, Airtable, People that use Excel very well, Airtable is an online um, Excel that, that can integrate to so many things and get to know them as well. And generally software development, which being um, um, I'm sure they're, they're, they're anchoring this very well in, in their company. So just to set this out there, um, you have to think about what inspires you. You have to think about what you, you love to do, then make a choice. Now, next thing is, how can I amplify, amplify my digital skills and presence? Very simple, do it for passion. You have to learn, unlearn, and relearn. Now, what do I mean by that? We all know a lot of things. We all carry um, knowledge from how we are born, or what we acquired, um, what we acquired over the years and all that. When you go into this space, when you start working with people, when you start collaborating with people, you have to learn new things. You have to unlearn old things, and you have to decide to learn new things. Don't just say, this is me, this is how I am. This, uh, this personality I have today has not been the personality I had 10 years ago. I couldn't speak in public. I couldn't, uh, I was just a shy engineer back in, give it to me, I'll do it for you, garbage in, garbage out. But over the years, 
I've got to improve myself. So these are the things that need to, we need to help to amplify. You have to read. So most engineers, most people just feel that, oh, just learning the skills alone is enough. It's not. You have to read and, and expand your knowledge. I'm a reader. I didn't just start today to read. I wasn't a reader before. I got inspired by my mentor to start reading. And I found out, also they said in a very popular Italian adage, he said, when you hide something, you want to hide something from a black man, put it inside a book. There's so much knowledge in books. Knowledge that people don't actually say that. What we see today are trainings, skill transfer, but knowledge transfer, you have to find it yourself and they're embedded inside books. You have to invest in yourself. I'll talk about this further. Free and paid trainings, you have to invest, find those resources, learn them because here again, Big Bingcom is, uh, is giving an opportunity for you guys to come on board and see what they have and get inspired and join their force and let them put you in the right direction because you need that hand, you need that guidance as well. You need to practice. When I say practice, you, whatever you learn, come back again and, and try it out. Don't just go out there, I can do this. Then you want to try an error. You, it won't work. Even to scale through the interviews, now companies don't want to train people any longer. The one people that are ready for the industry you need to teach as well. When I say teach, uh, it's a, a very popular quote that they say when you teach one, you teach another. I mean, you teach yourself as well. You keep growing. That's why I joined mentorship. You need to volunteer sometimes if you need to, to show yourself that you can do something. From there, someone can say, ah, this guy deserves to be paid. I'm not saying go and do internship in a very bad place that they don't uh, appreciate you. you, just have to make the choice. Someone wants to actually know when to leave a company when a place is frustrating. So put yourself out there, volunteer. If it doesn't favor, pull out, look for the next place. Don't be docile. Uh, yeah, show your work. Again, social media is there. Twitter for, for casual uh, presence, LinkedIn for professional presence, um, Instagram for marketing and advertising. So you have to show your work again. Now, to also put some buttress into number three item, how to invest in yourself is there are paid resources. Coursera is one online. LinkedIn by Linda is one, another place. Pro site is another place. And Udacity is another place. However, you can start with the free resources. Google. I had to put this down there, how you can search for things in Google. What is product design? Read about them. Articles will lead to the next article. Go deeper again. What is your design? What is data science? PDF. I want a PDF that I can cook. If you just search for things, you'll find them. They're in the fingertip. The YouTube is now a good place. I found out that my wife has like 29 gig data of ATL for YouTube. That only happens between 1 a.m. and 5 p.m. I'm going to go on Twitter and tell them, how can you do that? So it means that there are opportunities in some networks that you can just, I'm going to talk about how you can maximize your time. Sleep early, wake up, and use the free, free uh, internet and learn and improve yourself. So that's for free resources. Pro tip until how to learn again, Google Podcasts. So it's not only the skills alone you need, you need to, you need to listen to stories of people, how they got inspired, how they did things, so that when you go out there to interview for people, you will not be saying, I wrote a code. You're telling them, the story, tell a story. It's called um, storytelling. So you, you put your portfolio out there and you tell the story of how you achieve that goal. So those things cannot be found in some tutorials on how to build a skill, but they can be found in podcasts, in free in ebooks, in meetups, attend meetups. Now this is this again, this is a remote, remote era. In the last three months, I think I've attended like uh, almost 20 meetups in different countries. I don't even know them, but I just signed up meetup. And I put my interest and I get a lot. Oh, digital um, UX design in Helsinki in this. I just join and I learn a lot. I just keep quiet and I learn a lot. Just like if you're here now, you're listening. I'm sure you're learning. Do this all the time. Weekends, weekday, then look for mentorship opportunities. Wherever they're offering mentorship opportunities, go in there and get inspired. Learn from the experienced people as well. Now, that's, that's addressing the question of where can I find resources? I mentioned a lot of them as well. Now, when can I start? Start today. Make time for growth. Now, what do I mean by this? So I, I, one, of my, one of my first books that I finished was um, Outliers by uh, Malcolm Gladwell. Now, Malcolm Gladwell had a chapter called 10,000 Hours. 
although it has been debunked by now, but uh, I still believe in it now. Why I say I still believe in it is this. You need to practice and learn for a certain number of hours to become very good at what you do. That is what I, I believe in. Yes, it can be less than that, depending on how your adoption skills are. It can be more than that, depending on how free and available you make time for it. But it's always around that number professionally. If you want to know what you do, you're very good at spending a lot of time. Now, I always have this formula to read a book for 45 minutes a day. Don't read a book for a chapter or a number of pages, just 45 to one hour per day. That's the minimum that I invest in myself daily when I, am, when I have the available time. It's not every day. So again, depends on your work structure and your availability. So um, with that, you can have six hours per week minimum if you're working. And you can even do more than that if you're a freelance for 10 hours a week. That is how you make time to grow. Be an early riser, wake up in the night and read. How does that work? Ensure you go to bed by nine o'clock because you had a long day. If you are six hours sleep, I mean by 3 a.m. you are awake. Between 3.30 and 5 a.m. before your next day starts, you've done, you have achieved an added value for yourself. Sacrifice fun for growth. Reduce your screen time. A lot of us spend time on, on, on social media. It doesn't help. I'm a corporate, I won't lie, but I, I have a sticker in front of me that just tells me close Twitter. And when I turn my eye and I look at it, I just turn it off. Sometimes I go there to find resources, follow some important people to learn. So I'm also a corporate, but the important thing is discipline. Be accountable to yourself, discipline yourself. Don't let these things around distract you. So at the time that I started, there were less distraction. But I keep, when I say young person today, I tell them that there's a lot of distraction today that distracts more than the time we started. So you have to discipline yourself and, and ensure that you, you put the right amount of time investing yourself to grow. So again, 45 minutes is my advice. You can spend to read, to grow and develop yourself and all that. So um, yeah, so I end, I end with um, a quote that says, success is when reality catches up with your imagination. What does that mean? So if you're a Christian, again, I have to digress. Joseph had a, a dream, a vision to become whoever he wants to become in life. But he didn't get there just like that in a straight line. He, he, he served, he spent time. So you have a success, a vision of what you want to have in mind. You saw that list I shared, you want to be a developer today, tomorrow, you have that picture. But it's an imagination. So you have to make time for it. You have to invest time in it. You have to grow. You have to, you have to sacrifice a lot of things and get to where you want to go, go to. So again, success is when reality catches up with your imagination. Be realistic with yourself. That's from Simon, um, Simon Sinek. All right. Thank you. And if you have questions, unmute your mic and shoot at me. Thank you. Moody, are you there? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Thank you very much. That was very thorough. And um, you took us through the basic. And thank you for for being vulnerable enough to uh, take us through your foundation, you know, not too many people will include working in a microfinance bank, you know, in their, <laughs> in their resume. Your resume is a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit intimate. But thank you for taking oh, that. Please, <laughs> let me take that, please. I, I, I didn't know that you have a product that is worth over a hundred uh, billion. Right. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I actually saw that in the press some some two weeks ago. Inspector has, um, has has um yeah. this boss a hundred billion naira, and yeah. with zero point one MPL, and wow. Um, yeah, wow. and and I know they're making a lot of profit in that area as well. So when I saw it, I was excited. I said, "Wow, thank God I was part of that team that built it." Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, it's, it's, it's and there. we are inspired. We are inspired. We are inspired. Thank so, you. so thank you very much for, for your time. Um, um, so if anyone, if anyone has question, anyone? if anyone has question, just put it on the chat box. We want to quickly press time, right? And see if Barry can jump into the conversation, right? And at the end of Barry's conversation, uh, we will not take the questions uh, together. Barry is already um, up. 
Uh, hi, buddy. Hi. Hi, my dear. Hope uh, you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you. And I like the play of nature behind you. Very inspiring. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for spending time with, with us. Uh, uh, I'll just do a brief introduction. Uh, I think everybody knows Buddy in Nigeria now. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> So he, he's the CTO of Social Lender, uh, an online lending platform that enables financial institutions to extend digital financial service to um, targeted demography. Uh, Buddy has built many products in the past, and I will allow him to go through some of them so that I don't miss out on anyone, don't do injustice to anyone, right? And he will be speaking to us on the opportunities uh, that he sees in emerging um, digital technology, right? Uh, being someone that has done over 17 years in the industry, he has seen the various trend and he can project to us to say, you know, in the next uh, one to two years, these are the trends, these are the things we should be investing our time, energy, resources in uh, to, to, to position us rightly for, uh, for want of a better word, for the harvest that is coming, right? <laughs> so um, without further ado, please welcome Mr. Badi Adeshamo as he takes us further in the conversation. Yeah, th thank you, Modi. Um, good afternoon, everybody. And um, I will try and keep my presentation short uh, because I would like us to uh, place a premium on question and answer. So we know, we make sure, uh, myself and Otobon, make sure that we are addressing everybody's concern and everybody's um, question. But let me just drill down into a few things before uh, then we get into, I guess, question and answer. Um, when we say, I mean, imagine opportunities in the field of uh, digital tech, um, I used to call it ICT back in the days, but over time now, we just know it as tech now or generally digital tech. There's a lot that you will find out there. There's a lot that you can find by simply Googling even that topic. You will see things along the line of Internet of Things. You will see things along the line of 3D printing robotics, uh, blockchain is really big right now um, for those of us that are early adopters and those of us that are late adopters, it's really big. It's something you have to pay attention to because there are blockchain developers out there. Um, immersive media, uh, VR, AR, and several others are things that you will find when we start talking about the field of digital tech. But why I wanted to take a slightly different direction today is because sometimes it would feel like, oh, this thing is overwhelming because there's so many different things out there. How do I know what I should go into today? How do I know what I should focus on as at this moment, right? Uh, and if you don't take anything out of this um, and you want me to just say cut blank word without you drilling down into what it is that you do, what skills that you have, and so on, I will probably say, learn something like HTML, HTML5, CSS, JavaScript. Those are like the foundation for a lot of different web and applications and um, technology opportunities today. But the truth is that in itself is still foundational. And it will surprise you to know that over a period of time, many of the things that you consider high tech today will become foundational in nature, but I will get there. And so this is something I would like to just mention to so many of us that are generally getting into the field of technology today. And that is that think about your career as a funnel of some sort. Yes, you want to be an expert in something, but the truth is that you cannot be sure that that's something you want to be an expert in would be around in the next 10 years because things are changing. Maybe 10 years ago, 20 years ago, um, building data centers was a big deal. And it was something that was huge in terms of opportunity and skills that were needed and so on. But the truth is, as I right now, it is now narrowing down because everybody is hosting in the cloud. Of course, yes, there are specific engineers that would manage the data centers of the like of Google, of the likes of Facebook, and so on. But it is now narrow. 
you have to be a very an expert and you have to have gotten to the top because they don't want someone that does not have any experience right and the question is how do you build that experience when you don't have the opportunity to play with a data center in the first place how do you build that experience and so one of the things i would advise for those that are listening today is that think about your career as a dartboard and that's why i put this dartboard um right there number nine on the dartboard is your target but instead of you trying to focus on achieving number nine alone achieve just land on this that board anywhere on the board that should be your focus so if the opportunities that you have in the field of technology is x but you know that okay a is where i'm actually going start from somewhere start from ground zero don't say this thing is too complicated don't say oh what i really 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 want to be is i want to be a php developer because guess what nobody knows if php is going to survive or not within the next 20 years guess what php itself was not actually built as a programming language when it started php was built as a scripting language for scripting on on a web view it was over a period of time that php has gotten to a point today where it is running over 50 percent of the web as of today so there is a big opportunity for PHP today. And if you don't know what PHP is, you can simply Google it. It's a programming language. There's huge opportunity in that field. But the truth is that don't limit yourself to say, oh, I'm just going to be a PHP developer. Pick up other programming languages. Pick up Python, pick up Node.js, pick up all sorts and all. Definitely, you even need to have multiple programming languages in your belt. Because if you look at some of the vacancies, that you may be interested in in the near future you will see that they are usually asking that oh you should be proficient in this but at the same time you should also have other programming languages and other skills in your belt we say it this way in Bincom that you should know something about everything and then know everything about something but i'm saying that for you to even start for you to start building up that expertise for you to start building your up yourself a profile a career in the field of tech just land on the that board first right so if it's project management that will get you into the room get into the room um one of my ex colleague sent me a message yesterday and i found it interesting i didn't plan to talk about it but yeah it's a good example um right um, he landed in Bincom as project management, but guess what? Today he's working as a developer, right? He's working as a developer, and he sent me a message yesterday that, oh, thank you for the opportunity that uh, Bincom gave me, right? And I, I felt very good. I felt very good about that, and I felt. Uh, but the truth is, imagine he said, oh, the opportunity I'm looking for is I must be a developer on get go, right? Rather than oh, let me even get into the room and maybe I'll be able to switch. And that's something I wanted to just say to people before I drill down into a wide array of different skills that are in demand today in the field of technology. And as you grow, please do not stop at just being that generalist. Do not stop at just being that person that is only is knows something about everything, but then you are not an expert in anything because that in itself will be a problem for you. So understand what I have said. What I have saying is for you to start, get in the room right but as you get into the room start narrowing your field of influence start narrowing your field of expertise to a point where they would know you as an expert in x whatever that x is is up to you right it is up to you because there are several opportunities and these opportunities are so many that we cannot exhaust all of them right some of you are familiar with the fact that we've been running something called emigrate helping people develop um, their tech-enabled profile or their tech-enabled business to be able to, um, for them to be able to relocate, for them to be able to settle in different economy. And so this is something that has a, quite a number in terms of a list from the uh, Tech Nation's website. And Tech Nation is, um, for the UK government, the UK government says that they want exceptional talent in the field of technology to move to their country right and they they've listed out some of the skills which they believe that are in high demand in their country as at today 
And they're saying that if you are able to show yourself as exceptional in this field, we want to give you a visa. We want to give you permanent residency, which is called ILL in the UK and so on. And the, the, the skills that you see on my screen right now are some of those skills, right? And we'll drill down into some of them um, in a minute. So you have things like the DevOps and SysOps um, engineer. Notice that uh, nobody is really focusing on you just being an inf a structural engineer, or oh, you can take about a laptop and you can put it back together. Those are skills that are important. Those are skills that you should have. But think about it from a point of view that many people don't ever have to touch a physical memory chip anymore. A lot of people can simply click on Azure, on AWS, on Google Cloud, and you can spin up a system that has whatever um, amount of memory you want, whatever amount of this space that you want, and so on. If you have the, base, the physical technology skill, of course it's good. There are roles for you. However, bear in mind that where the world is going is cloud, multi-cloud, infrastructure as code, um, IAS, um, that's infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and so on. Some of these things I'm saying, if you don't know what they are, you can simply Google them, right? Because it's your job to decide for yourself nobody can plan your career for you the best anybody can do is to give you guidance the best anybody can do is to say to you that oh these are the opportunities but then everybody's background is different everybody's experience is different everybody's interest is different and all of those will form a, a combination of all of those will form your decision in terms of where it is you generally go to. But get uh, understand something I said earlier, which is that even though you are zoning in to say, oh, what I want to be today is a data scientist. But for you to be a data scientist, you need experience. Data scientist is one of the least on that list. You need experience. So if all you can get today is to be a data analyst, start from there. Start from there. If all you can be today is a DBA, start from there. And generally, over a period of time, you can start owning your skill because data engineering is required for you to even be a data scientist anyway, right? You need to have that knowledge. You may not be the person feeding in billions of terabytes of data into the, the model and all, but it may be something useful for you. And so whatever opportunity it is that you found, um, or that is available to you today, get in the room, get on that dash, on that dashboard, and then gradually you can start moving towards where it is that you actually want to be, right? Okay. Particularly because those of us in Nigeria, right, there's a bit of a disadvantage. The disadvantage is that there is a lot of opportunity out there, but sometimes you have been limited to a couple of things. Right? I saw a job vacancy the other day where they said, oh, Nah, they don't want anybody from Nigeria because they've hired people from Nigeria and they don't have light, they don't have data and all of those kind of things. And so that organization said that, oh, they no longer hire people from Nigeria. Whether you like it or you don't like it, that's not the point I'm making today. The point I'm making is that those opportunities are there. You are where you are today. You are where, you're, where, where, where you were born and all of that, but you can make many changes and you can take advantage of many of those opportunities. I left this screen purposely so that at least you can grab it, you can take a screenshot in case you want to take a look at it, you want to decide for yourself. And bear in mind that there are two sides to it. There's the technical skills and the business skills. Gone are the days when, when we say technology, we are only talking about the technical skills. We have realized as an industry that there is a requirement for the business side of the technical of, of, of technology as well. The business side of technology starts with something like project management, service management, product management. Those three things I've said are three different things, three different things, right? However, in an organization like Bincom, we combine those skills. Why do we do that? Because generally speaking, you may not be sure eventually where it is that you will get to. Is it going to be that they are looking for a project manager or they are looking for a service manager or they are looking for a product manager, right? There are several similarities between those skills and that's why we combine them. So you can build yourself, you build yourself in IT, that's the IT infrastructure library. You build yourself in PMP or Prince2. And of course, Agile is a given today. 20 years ago, Agile did not exist. 
guess what? Agile was just a couple of people that went somewhere in Canada. They locked themselves in a room, a couple of experts, and they came up with a manifesto to say the way we've been doing work, we don't like it that way. This is the new way we want to start working. And it grew, it caught fire because it was something, it was a solution to a problem that existed. The problem of waterfall, the problem of creating requirement document that is no longer relevant by the time the software has been delivered. So there's a business side of things as well. Digital marketing is one of the business side of tech that many people do not pay attention to. Many people don't realize that digital marketing itself is a big deal. It's a big deal. But the digital marketing, the way we know it today, did it exist 30 years ago? No, 20 years ago, no, even 10 years ago. Now there's a new field in digital marketing that is called performance marketing. What's that field about? Now people realize that, oh, for you to get people to adopt your product, you need to spend money on adverts, on platforms like uh, Google, like Facebook, and so on. You need to spend money on those platforms for you to do advertisements. That spending on the advertisement can convert high conversion or low conversion. And it depends on the skill of the people that are running the adverts because conversion rate would have to, have to do with many factors. It's about psychology. It's about giving the customers what they want. It's about knowing the audience and all of those things. And so that's something called performance marketing. But you can't say, oh, I'm a performance marketer. Oh, I've only spent 1 million Naira in advertisement. And so therefore I'm a performance marketer. No way. You have to be doing billions of, well, millions of Naira. Um, mean thousands hundreds of thousands of dollars for you to be qualified as a performance marketing expert and then they are going to be looking at things like your return on investment are you making a loss or are you making a profit running those adverts getting customers onto those platforms and so on and these are business skills and some have also spoken about some technical skills and that brings me to this to say if you are trying to do data science and uh, you want to be an expert data scientist start with python Python is very easy to pick up. There's a lot of information on it online. There are many Python libraries that will help you with data science and so on. And so that's a fantastic place for you to start. For example, if you want to get into data science, and this is a model, what I'm showing you right now is actually a model that we use within Bincom uh, Dev Center. If you're saying that, oh, what I want to do is I want to be a backend developer, then start with PHP or Node.js or any of those. And then you can, over a period of time, start building all the other skills that are needed. You can't be a backend developer if you don't understand databases. You can't be a backend developer if you don't understand data structure and so on. You can't be an expert backend developer. That's what I mean. If you are looking at front end, you can start with JavaScript, many of the JavaScript library. When I started in the field of technology, JavaScript was simply an helper class. In fact, many people hated JavaScript. If you go and Google information about JavaScript from 20 years ago and so on, you will find that many people hated JavaScript. And there was even, um, there was a competitor to even JavaScript at that point um, in time. We were not sure who was going to win. Now, JavaScript has won. JavaScript is fast, is well, fast, is being adopted very fast and with opposition to something like php where the adoption is also going um, a little low but then php came up with php 7 and php's adoption started going higher again so you may want to take a look at that devops um look at um we we combine devops and infrastructure track and why is that because devops itself requires expertise you have to be an expert software developer plus an expert infrastructure person for you to be able to do devops because devops is about automation of the different um, resources, devices, and so on that are available. You cannot do that if you don't have a solid understanding of the basics, starting with things like A+, plus, um, N+, plus, the network side, the uh, firewall side, and so on. And then combining with automation, which you will require some programming and so on. UI, UX, uh, graphics, um, and so on. So I'll just move on because I, I suspect I'm out of time already and last thing i'll just mention is that please pay attention to trends pay attention to trends pay attention to trends do not sit down in your silo in your bunker and assume that oh because i'm going to be a python developer everything is fine it may not be 
because the truth is i'm not a i'm not a prophet right we don't know what will happen in 10 years time however if you have a general experience around a certain sector in it you are sort of safe because even if that is not what you're looking for at this point um even if um that is not what you're looking for at this point and your skill your expertise is not what they are looking for you can quickly build expertise in what they are looking for today for example if you're an expert project manager in pmp you can pick up agile very quickly in fact the pmp curriculum now has incorporated agile into the curriculum and that is something that just happened recently remember what i told you about agile it's just a couple of people that came up with it and then all of a sudden it has caught the world by storm every organization is now moving to agile and there are different implementation of it even for enterprise as well so if you say you're a programmer today something you should pay attention to is no code platforms because some of the people that you would not have thought would be programmers are currently able to develop their application, whatever brainwave, whatever idea they have, they're able to do the application on low code platforms today. So maybe your job is threatened and you don't know. Get me right. Of course, there will be a few programmers that will have to build that no code platform for everybody to be able to use the building blocks. But that's just going to be a very small subset. And of course, that will be for the most exceptional for the, the IS experience and all of those. So bear that in mind, pay attention to that trend. If you say you're a graphics designer today, pay attention to tools like Canva because even, um, <laughs> even my wife now does her own graphics herself. Gone are the days where you'll be begging one graphics designer to say, oh yeah, now send me this thing, send me this thing, send me this thing. Now people do their own graphics themselves right, using tools like Canva. Will it be as nice as something done on CorelDRAW plus um, Photoshop? Maybe not, but it would do. And it's fine for what it is that they need to use it for at that point. And so maybe your graphic design skill, you need to start adding more things to your graphics design skill. Video editing, you would think that that is a safe zone as well, but go online, you will find several videos editing solutions. Before now, those solutions, some of them only had one channel, so you couldn't do some of the fancy things that you could do on um, Illustrator uh, and so on. But now, a lot of these platforms are now existing, built by software developers, built by other technology people, but solving a problem at scale. I'll give you an example. I started out my career as a software developer, particularly as a web developer, and this when I started all my career was in the, um, when did I graduate, around 2000, 2001, 2002, and thereabouts. And we could charge in millions for that skill. Today, you can only charge in millions if you are a software developer, not just web, not just that you're a web designer and that you build basic HTML website. That era has passed. The average person today is able to pick up tools like WordPress to do it themselves. And even if you say that is too complicated, there are tools like Wix and webs.com and wordpress.com where you can just spin up your website, choose a template and move on. When I started my career, it was almost like cheating for you to be buying a template for the client. You typically were supposed to do your own template yourself over a period of time buying template was the normal was the norm but now the customer typically does not need you to put together a basic website for them anymore they may need you to put together an application that does a certain thing in a certain process but pay attention to those trends i'll give you one more example as i close and that is uh business process vlp uh business process uh business resource planning right it's called blp and that's for process making out a process so if an organization has something like oh um this is our process step one is they bring a file to my office step two is i sign the file then i send it to someone else's desk step three is that someone else will take a look at it and move it to the next person and so on you will think that that role is safe it no longer is because there are solutions like process maker that are open source and they are visual in nature so you simply have to drag and drop 
So build out your process and that entire process will be automated for you. There are solutions like Odoo where all of those will be done. Yes, there's still a gap for people that will build Odoo, right? Odoo is a Python um, ERP as well, enterprise resource planning. Everything I've said that you may not know, Google it, it is in the public domain. Odoo is a, an open source enterprise resource planning tool. And I'm saying that Odoo has been made so simple that the average person, as long as they can use Microsoft Word, as long as they can use Google Doc, they can use Google Drive, and this is like a basic skill today, they are able to spend a bit of time to pick up building those things. So those are not niches anymore. And so pay attention to those trends as well. Finally, I will say this. Um, my slide has refused to move, um, but I believe my last slide was to say, one moment. Am I still audible? Yes, I am. Can you see me? Yes, we can. Okay, fantastic. Finally, I would say keep building. Keep building, keep building, keep building yourself, keep building yourself, keep building yourself because there's so much more out there. If you choose to be in the field of technology, you have sentenced yourself to reading for the rest of your life. If you were not passionate about it, and I believe Otumbong um, uh, mentioned that, then you enter the wrong field in the first place. So you better build that passion. You know how you marry someone you didn't like, but all of a sudden you people will build your own love together. Hey, you can do that. But if you get into the field of tech and you want to be good in this field, develop that passion, find that passion and find your niche. But over a period of time, realize that that niche may be disappearing and you may have to keep building all different things and adding more skills and so on. Also, make up your mind that you want to know something about everything and that you want to know everything about something. At my level today, I'm a technology leadership. I'm CTO for different uh, startups, endeavors, and so on. I'm technology leader, software architect for several. And at that level, it's no longer about you having a particular um, one skill. You need to be able to bring together all the different kinds of skills that are in the field of technology to deliver solution to the business, alignment of technology, to solution but that's at another level today the key point is get to a point where you'll be recognized as an expert in something but at the same time know something about everything i hope this was useful and uh, thank you thank you buddy uh thank you for for being very thorough um i hope everybody got more than one thing and i hope we have questions Right, and this is now the time for questions, question, question. Thank you very much. And uh, one of the things that both speakers sort of talked about is you have to start, right? You have to start and you have to keep evolving. You have to keep building. Uh, Autobahn said it nicely uh, that you have to read, you know, the skills transfer and the knowledge transfer. So you have to read, 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 read the trends, read newspaper, read books, read things in your area of interest, follow, um, podcast, you know, join sessions like this, right? You know, make yourself available. So one of the questions, um, Autobahn, somebody asked yeah. a question. Yeah, and okay. the person said, how do you differentiate between product design um, experts and a product manager? You know? How do you differentiate? Yeah. Okay. Between product, mm. product development and product design um, expert. Okay, so I'll, I'll first of all sound a bit. Um, you can find that difference in Google if you actually want to know it. But however, <laughs> however, a, more a product designer, a product designer is someone that solves problem, and a product manager is someone's. So when you call when you say management, so let's put it this way. The new word for product managers today is, um, should I say, a BA, a business analyst, has evolved into a product manager, or a project manager has evolved into product manager. How do I? What's, what can be the? How is how is that clear? So today, we're building products. We're not building softwares or or yeah, you know, I won't want to call the word software. Someone said, I build a software. No, you're building products. 
that are standalone and you want to manage a product, you want to be a product designer, it's clearly defined. You have to have a business skill to know both in both how they related business is a center. But for product design, you have to be very good in understanding user centered design. So user centered design is combination is a foundation of UX or the UI is is on the UX. But in terms of UX, there are four things you need to know. There are four pillars: user research, interaction design, and interaction interface design, usability and heuristics, and information architecture. Those are the few pillars that makes up a UX design uh, umbrella. Those are the foundations that are the pillars that support it. UI is just a subset of UX. Now, when you, how do you come, become a product designer? Is that you have now one take add additional cap to your head and say, what is how important is this business uh, product to the business? So you don't just say, okay, I can design fantastic things and it works, but you just have to know how does it translate to the business side, understanding how users will come in, where the business will make money and all that. So that is a product design aspect. And for a product manager, again, like I said, the center is business. The product manager says, okay, what are the resources that will get this thing running? What are the dependencies that will get this running? What are the things that business wants? I'm going to interpret it and ensure that everybody stay on course and direction without losing focus. That's a product manager. So um, you may not need to write code or design in product man management, but you just have to know how to manage things, manage stakeholders, um, understand what the business wants, and ensure that everyone that's going to work on that product stay on course. Sometimes, uh, as a senior product designer or in principal designer, product managers work at hand in hand with product, design, product managers and all that. So yeah, or solution architects in, as a general cap. So a solution architect is someone that has understand the product the development side of that product and understand the product management that part and architect the whole solution out. I don't know if I've answered the question, but they can actually get a full deep, um, definition of all those things in Google. Just type it and then what is the product manager, what is the product designer, and dive into well, it and I get more resources. You answered it fantastic. Uh, yeah, thank you. Fantastic. Can, can I just, just add one more thing uh, to that? Yeah, yeah. If you are yeah. at a beginner level, don't be trying to differentiate those different skills. Just pick up all the different skills that you can have at the same time at beginner exactly. level. When you get to intermediate exactly. level, you can start now moving to a point where you are like building expertise in one or the other because they have different skills they need. But at your beginner level, just pick up as many things as you can at the same time. Yeah, awesome. So what Bade is trying to say is be a generalist at the beginning. Absorb every knowledge you need available. Then if you work in an industry that suppresses a concern, yes, you can do that. If you work around this country to show yourself, to, be, to put your work out there, you have to be a generalist because we're still, I don't want to use the word, and an enslaved environment. You understand? It's just that sometimes you can wear, I, when I started my career, I wore multiple caps. I was social media manager. I was this, I was that. If I did not, practice like but, but i say absorb all those knowledge i won't be relevant for the next company to to, to seek me do you understand that's how you grow so when you get down the career line you can now streamline and say i want to be a professional ux designer or a professional ux uh, product manager so what but i trying to say is absorb the knowledge you can absorb be a generalist and keep moving but not at the beginning you just want to just take one sometimes over here you have to win more than two or three caps to be seen as being good at what you do. Okay, thank you very much. I think you just answered uh, the second question uh, with that um, phrase, be a generalist, because the next question was, do I need to be a great graphic designer uh, to, be, um, to join or pursue a career in product design? Do you want to speak just, to that? Just, yeah, just, just to add to that as well. Hmm. Visual design is, is, so graphics, you need to use the word, let's sound more professional or let's sound okay. more, more, I want to help the person asking that question. Don't say you're a graphic designer. Graphics can be text alone, but visual design is combination of text and image. So try and push yourself up 
to that understanding of that the visual designer. Now to put make go back to go to the next step of being a UI designer, you have to understand the principles of design, typography, hierarchy. So you have been doing most of those things as a visual designer, as a graphic designer, but going to read the principles to understand what makes those things stand out and pop, what would differentiate you is to acquire the knowledge of knowing those principles. Now, next step being a UX, there's a difference between UX. When some job posting say UI slash UX, is it UI or the slash is always or, but it's always UI is a different thing, UX is a different thing. So get a UX knowledge, you need to start devouring knowledge about um, user-centered design, what user psychology. So let me give you an example, very clear example. Um, there's, a, there's a heuristics um, principle that says, um, a UX that says that um, people get attracted to find design. There's, I won't mention a brand here. There's a company that used to do that when they launch a product, it's so fine, we love it, but underneath it's not working. I don't want to mention names here, but they, they were successful in doing that because the visual was fine, but they were not ready when they launched. You understand? I know Moody and Bade will know who I'm talking about. I don't want to mention names. So, yeah. so it, it's 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 a lot of knowledge to just build to move from that ladder: visual, UI, user interface design, UX design, then product design. It, it, it don't, I don't advise them to jump from visual to product. The the hurting part is that we apply for those jobs and they ask you questions and they sound nice. They, just, they don't give you feedback in interviews. Oh, oh great, great. And they oh, sorry, I cannot continue with you. And you now say another rejection. Well, why did you get another rejection? Because you're not ready when you get to you put yourself out there. So just ensure that you're ready and join conferences, gauge yourself in, in collaborate with people. When you hear people talk about what I should do, again, is that I'll pick up a job resume, a job requirement on the LinkedIn. And I ask myself a hundred percent, can I do this job? I write, I'll take it, take it, take it. The one I cannot do, I go and research about it. I go and read about them. So that when the interview comes, when the opportunity comes, I can talk about it. I can demonstrate, I can show a portfolio. So that's how it is. From visual to UX, there are a lot of foundations and steps to climb. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, just to mention to everyone that, okay, you can ask your questions. You can drop it on the chat box, right? I'm just taking questions that we are sent in uh, before now, which are very few. So I need everybody in the room to participate by asking questions so that we can learn for, from each other. This is a very interactive, uh, interactive session, right? Uh, the next question is for Buddy, right? But if somebody's acting, um, yeah, maybe. how did you? How did you stay focused in your in your path, considering the evolution of technology and the um, let me help him paraphrase, considering the evolution of technology and the ever changing um, designs that uh, languages rather that comes out every day. So how do you stay focused in your path, considering the evolution of technology and the ever changing languages that comes out every day? So I kept learning and I kept learning and I kept learning and I kept learning and I am still learning even till now, right? Um, I'll give you a brief overview. It um, may not be totally accurate, but uh, when I was in university, I used to do freelancing and I used to do freelancing for HTML, CSS, just building basic websites. Back in those days, CMSs were not popular. Drupal was just being built. WordPress was just being built for blogging and so on. So those things were not popular when I was in university, but I used to do a bit of freelancing and so on. Then I got into Flash. So Flash back in the days was very popular. Many sites were built in Flash. You would have a Flash landing page before people get to your actual page. And then Flash came up with something called Action Script. Oh, sorry. I used to write VB6 too back in the days, but anyway. Flash, the ones I remember right now, Flash came up with something called Action Script, and I learned that, did stuff for people like uh, companies like Coca Cola. Freelancing at that point, anyway, uh, Coca Cola did a couple of things along the line, writing Flash Action Script. That was some sort of niche at that point. By the time I was graduating from university, CMSs were just picking up. And so I picked up Joomla. Um, I was lucky. I think we got a client that wanted something that required the CMS. And it was that that I used to build 
and start learning how to do Joomla, right? And I think it was because of Joomla I had to learn PHP. I can't remember um, exactly, but I had to learn and learn and learn. Please understand that what, what was going on at that point was I just kept discovering new technology and I kept adding them into the things I already knew. I did A plus at some point and I basically grew as a generalist, but then was focused on specific application development. Over a period of time, I grew into leadership, uh, first leading a small team. And at that point, my requirement was no longer for me to just be the developer. I also needed to be able to manage the project. And then that was when I started learning something called uh, project management. I did not know um, when I started in the industry, I did not know that you needed, um, there was something called scope creep, for example. And so I built and built and built and I kept learning. So um, I don't know if that is helpful to the person that asked. Um, back in those days, we didn't have online videos that we have today on YouTube where you can play video on 2X and then you can quickly pick up some of the information that you need. Back in those days, you had to invest in buying physical books. Companies like O'Reilly Press, I don't even know if they still exist today. O'Reilly Press, um, Pact Publishing, and all. So you guys know I've been in this game for a bit, and so on. They used to write books. And so you buy those books. So when I travel and I can't afford to buy the book, I will go and sit down in libraries. Not libraries, bookshop. Borders was the bookshop I used to yeah. sit down in then. I will go from my house um, back in those days in Birmingham, and I will go and resume in Borders. It's a bookshop. Oh. They sell books, but they allow you to read the books that they sell. I can't afford to buy the books. So I will sit down in that bookshop and I will read the entire book over maybe a day or two, and then I won't buy it. Then the ones that I know that oh, this one is very useful that I need to keep, then I will take those and buy those ones. Those are, that's how I used to develop myself back in those days. But you guys, for many of the people on the call, you guys have all of those resources online now. They're on YouTube. Every course that you have to pay for in um, Udemy and so on, you'll find a similar one. It may not be as good on YouTube. So what you just need to do now is invest in data. If your data, you don't have unlimited data, invest and download YouTube Go. YouTube Go helps you because it already reduces the videos to a very small um, resolution. And so the data consumption is also short, is smaller at that point. So use YouTube Go to get the videos that you need and watch the videos that you need. And you can pick up some of those skills today. Oh, that was helpful. Okay. Yes, uh, that, was, that was very helpful. And uh, I'll take a follow-up question. Um, what, what, uh, which is your preferred um, programming language and which is your preferred product um, development technique that you um, use? Preferred pro programming language and preferred project development technique that you use? So I, I'm, I'm no longer a developer, so I wouldn't say I have a preferred uh, programming language anymore um, because I have to be proficient. Not proficient, I have to know enough about as many of them that I have to work with or that my client applications work in or that some of the products I manage work in. I need to know them. Um, but if your question is that which one should I learn today, I think I mentioned them in my presentation. Some of the very popular ones today are Python, uh, JavaScript, uh, PHP. Um, um, yeah, so you can start with those ones and there are several others, right? But if you're looking for those that, I mean, can get you into the industry very fast, those three will get you in the door very fast. Then you will start building yourself with additional languages like R and um, maybe call Java. Um, uh, what's this one used for iOS app? Swift and so on. You can start then building all those additional ones over a period of time. For project management methodology, it's agile now that we have to use. It's not, you are not even, it's not a choice anymore, but you would have a, a very strong asset if you understand waterfall and then also understand agile. So these two things are different mindsets. You will be an asset to your organization because people have started complaining about agile, right? And I can guarantee you in the next 10 years, there will be a revision to agile. There's a huge problem with agile, with planning, but let me get it. Let me, let me rephrase. There is a problem that can be solved. 
and you may be part of the people that will solve that problem, right? But bear in mind, like I said, keep a trap on trends that are going on. Okay, well, thank you very much, um, Mr. Badi. Right, the next question incidentally is for you. Um, software testing, automation, engineering, and the likes uh, is not listed in your presentation, the list you shared. Uh, does this mean that it does not, it's not part of the immigration program? So it's so there are two lists I shared. The first list was a list from technician site, and those were the lists that is on their website as of today. But if you check that website, you will see that they say that, that oh, these are not all the skills. These are just the ones that we are just showing you as an example. There are several other skills. As long as you are able to show that you are um, exceptional in that field, meaning that if I line up ten software testers you can show me that you are the most exceptional, you are the exceptional one out of all 10. Okay, and it's not so hard for you to be able to show those things because- But, it, those... before you, but if I cutting you short, sorry for cutting you short, a mm -hmm. um, couple of people on this call might not understand what technician means, text, text that means. Oh, you want to share, you know? okay, I, I apologize for that. I did mention in my presentation, but um, in case you are not familiar, a technician is a body and the, by, uh, that the UK government has said that you can issue out visas based on find people that are exceptional in the field of technology and let them move to the UK. And so they are able to give, uh, they are able to endorse people to get visas. But for you to get those endorsements, you have to show yourself as exceptional in your field. One of the services that Bincom Dev Center offers is the Emigrate program which uses not just the technician's requirement, but other countries as well, and uses that to handle people to be able to qualify over a period of time, between one to two years, we are able to handle for you to qualify for that visa by giving information, coaching, and so on. So that's what I was talking about. And uh, there was a second part of the question which I've lost track of right now. Oh yes, yeah. so I was saying the second list I was showing are some of the, the skills that we are building out in the in Bincom Dev Center. And yes, you're right, uh, testing and QA is not on the list because it's not an active team at the moment, but it's a team that we are currently building. And before the end of the next quarter, we would actually have QA and um, testing and penetration um, security, basically. Security, QA and testing is going to be a skill, uh, so is it, it's going to be a team within the Bincom Dev Center very shortly. Let, let me add to that question of the testing Jumping. thing. Yeah. yeah, so um, something is taking away testing from software testers called usability testing in the field of UX. So um, if, it, if it product is properly scoped and estimated and defined, a developer now has a way to test his software when he uses DevOps make sure that the code he written is right. But when it comes to testing, usually testing, when that product is ready, usually testing now takes a place of one person sitting on the software and signing it off at the end. When it enters the hands of the users, it is flawed. So if you, want, if you are a tester in the room, if you're a BA in the room, explore, like Dode said again, harnessing other skills that relates to that area and be efficient if it's been called upon in your company or where you're going to work with. Because if you only do one, I want to be the software tester. And you don't know what is happening. As you said again, the trends, listening to the trends, you lose out when the, when the, when the trends are already passed. So I just wanted to put that out there as well. Software testing, right now, is we testing and taking about software testing because DevOps is helping engineers write efficient codes. So nobody wants to sit down here and check, did you make any error? Then user story and acceptance criteria, again, from UX, as define what the developer needs to do. Again, then, then user testing is not the main thing because the users are not biased. When we build products as engineers, as developers, and UX designers, we have knowledge of that solution. We know how to use it. But when you put that product in somebody's hand, you start seeing the mistakes you're all making. 
So that is the main testing that is being encouraged now in industry, just to be out there. So understand what is retesting is as well, and put going to if you are, if you, you are a software tester. Thank you. Yeah, and also you may want to search for test driven development is a development technique that may be interesting to you as well. I wrote it in the chat. You can Google it as well. Okay, uh, so there is a question in the chat uh, uh, that's coming from a fresher, you know, and I want us to speak to it. Can like, he, can uh, he, I try to read a question. Can he unmute his mic and tell us what, what it, I'm trying, I'm trying, there's no, it's, it's so long. Yeah. Oh, so, um, to Lu, to Lua, are you there? Can you ask a question yourself? Because you, it wasn't really clear. It's like three or four questions in yeah. one. So, to Lua, I've unmuted you. Can you unmute yourself and ask the question yourself so that we can feel and get the juice of the question? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, maybe she, he or she is shy. Say, please, I'm a fresh shy in tech. Please, can I grow very healthy in industry? Know what? I'm just, it's a bit confusing. So this audio is yeah. bad. Okay, that's what he's trying to say. Oh, okay. 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 Not a problem. Uh, so let me try and paraphrase for him. So he, yeah, uh, please. Uh, mm. he's a fresher. Uh, uh, he wants to know what's the path to healthy, healthy growth in this world of development and um, how can he stay relevant? Right. How can it stay relevant um, in and learn very fast as well? Okay. You know, and it's reiterating the fact that he's a tester, he's, he's, a, he's a fresher, mm -hmm. and maybe he's plagued by many limitations, you know, from so how do I get resources, where do I get these resources from, you know, how do I learn, you know, where can I get the information from, so yeah. Let, let me take a stab at that. One part of what I would say is marketing, but the other part, I hope you pick it up that is not also marketing. For the marketing part, Bincom Dev Center was created to literally help you, right? And we have something called the Bincom Global Tech Program. I'm sure someone will speak about it during this session as well, which takes you and unrolls you from the learning stage, from your learning skills, to growing experience, to growing, gaining exposure. And what that does is that over a period of time, one to two years, one year minimum, two years maximum, you are able to come out on the other side as an intermediate level developer, as an intermediate level project manager, and some of the other skills along that line. And what that program solves is this particular thing you just mentioned, which is the fact that learning from scratch is hard, particularly if you do not have a community around you. But that's yeah. the marketing side. The other side of it is it is not only Bincom that has that kind of program. There are a few of them out there as well. Um, I'm sure they will say I'm not allowed to man, uh, mention um, others, but the good thing is that you can Google it. And not just in Nigeria. Some of them you have to pay for. Some of them you are able to do something like income sharing agreement. So but with the income program, you can do income sharing agreement, meaning that it's after you graduate and you start earning that you start paying for the program itself, which helps you in case you say there's no money to even uh, pay. But some you have to pay itself. Back in the days, we used to have things like Aptech, NIT, and so on. They are not as relevant today as they used to be back in those uh, days, but you will find other things like boot camps and, and so on that may be helpful. However, you may want to check. So this is back to marketing again. You may want to check to make sure that whatever one you are getting into, that they are going to unhold you to a point where you will get a job. Not that they will just teach you and then leave you and let you be. So bear that in mind as well. So I spoke from a marketing perspective, but I also spoke from what you need. Find a community around you that can help you grow very fast. Okay, thank you, buddy. Uh, Otto Bong, this is this question. I think it's for both of you, but I want yeah. Otto Bong to... I think Olusha Olu was raising his hand as well. I don't know if that. Um, I don't know if it, okay. Olu yeah, he was raising his hand earlier. I don't know if he still wants to take the question. Yeah. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Olusha. 
Okay. Um, I want to say this quickly. Um, I have uh, 11 years of experience in um, infrastructure, uh, IT infrastructure, um, networking, system administration, and all those, you know, sorts, security. Um, I took a decision to, for a career change. Uh, I've known about this technician thing uh, about two years ago. So I, I said, okay, since many companies are considering people coming into the dev space, many jobs that I've applied for, maybe in DevOps, they will say, okay, you need experiences, uh, the development experience. Maybe you, you have to be coding, programming or something. Okay, I, st- I, I tried to learn on my own, do Python, it was tough. Okay, I was advised to join a community. There is a meetup I joined and we, we, I paid, um, my, I got my company to be able to sign up for me. And funny enough, I'm not getting value for this training. You know, they put me on, on, on JavaScript and it was good. You call, your conversation was similar to this. And I said, okay, this is what I want. This is what I want to do. And I started and in the past two months, I literally find myself studying on my own again, back to square one. So what is the, what is, what exactly, um, because I don't mind the cost because I know that in the long run, uh, if you eventually get what you want, you'll get all the value that has you know, gone into, into all of these things. And I know that community development is the best approach if anyone wants to develop in the tech space. You know, studying on your own, trying to code on your own or do projects on your own, it is very, very tough. I've been trying to learn how to code since 2016. And I can tell you that the best projects that I have now are still on my local host. Okay, so what exactly, you know, does being come offer in, in specificity, you know, as to how they intend to help people to get into um, this dev space, especially people that are experienced, you know, because it, it required that you have some internship knowledge, some work experience, some real life work experience before you're even being considered to be say, okay, you are exceptional, you know, especially in this space. Thank you. All right. Um, can I take that, Modi? Yeah, you can go ahead. Okay. So, um, Olusha, I think the first problem is the fact that your projects are on localhost, right? And I joke with people and I call them Captain Localhost. No offense intended, right? Uh, that's the first problem that you need to solve. Second problem you need to solve is this. Learning on your own is is a model that works. And in fact, that's a model that we also use in Bincom. What we try to do to people in Bincom is we throw you in the deep end of a real life project. And we, are, we force you to learn how to swim. We, however, provide mentors to help you. Of course, that's after you've learned the basic skill. So first step is learn the basic skill, have your software in local host, be able to do a low world, be able to do to do to do list and guest book and so on. Be able to do that in whatever programming language. But you and I know that that in itself is just basic knowledge. You are still you are not even a beginner. In fact, as far as I'm concerned, right. And at that point, you can now start doing stuff. By the time you are thrown into a real life project, and that's what internships were designed to solve. The problem is that there isn't enough actual internship to go around if you don't create things. And so what we do is that we'll give you a project to do real life of a, something to solve. Of course, in a silo to make sure that the customers are not affected, project timelines are not affected and so on and so forth. And what that forces you to do is that you will have to learn many things. Some things that you did not know that you did not know. And some things that you thought you knew, but all of a sudden it is not working the way you expected it to work. Or you think that you have finished the project and the customer will come back and say, and your customer in this case is your project manager. We'll come back to say this is not what I want. Start from scratch again. The good news is that all of those things that you are doing, you are actually building capacity and you are building muscle. And that's what that's a model that we've used over many years as as an organization, and it has built many people. Does it work for all people hundred percent of the time? No. However, we believe that that's the best way for you to build yourself very quickly in the field of uh, technology. So that's what Bincom does for you um, with a program like the Global Tech, with a program like the Bincom Apprenticeship, with the internship and some of those other ones as well. Um, I don't know if that was helpful, uh, but if you would like, we can take it for that because we, uh, we don't want this to be a marketing um, event per se. We just want mm, you yeah. to know 
I mean, we offer this, but we are not the only ones that offer this. What we would like you to do is, I mean, you can look around in the community and all of that, but the best way to learn is be part of a community so that when you have a problem, you can quickly ask someone. I'll tell you a story. Back in the days when I was learning, right? There was nothing like WAMP. WAMP is a combination of, on Windows, combination of Apache, MySQL, PHP. When I was learning in tech, for you to set up your environment, you have to install Apache, then install MySQL, then install PHP, then connect all of them together. It took me a week to do that, right? And that's because I did not know anybody to go and ask. So you read a book and they will tell you step one, step two, step three. But step two made an assumption that you did not know about. So by the time you start looking for things, but what has changed now is that there's much more information out there. But do you even know where to look for those information? Sometimes no. But if you have a mentor, if you have someone you are learning with, if you have someone that recently learned it, if you have someone that had the problem before, some of those things help as well. Over to you, let, let, me, let me add to, to that. So I hear your pain point, and I can actually relate to what you're saying. But um, like I mentioned in my slide, there is something that comes with maturity. I don't want to use age as a number. Ability to unlearn what we think we know and have an open mind. I hear you have subscribed to a platform and they're teaching you something. I don't know if you pay for that platform, there can be some value there. We just have to have an open mind and be patient or look out for the opportunities you can hear from what they are saying. Then I also hear that some things on your local hosts, there's Git today. Like I mentioned in my slide, show your work. Even there's a book that is called Show Your Work. The Google is on Amazon. You can even find it's the PDA version of it. There's something called Git. If all the things you're doing is on Git, nobody's going to see you. You go for a development integrity issue, you send your, your, your Git, GitHub ID. They have done your background check. You're not seeing hits, green hits on your, on your they won't know. They won't trust what they're going to say in the interview. So you may, be, you may be good at where you are right now. Maybe you have learned a lot of things. But when you apply for jobs or, or something, they don't give you feedback of why they rejected you because you're not showing your work. So don't push things to your local host alone. Push it to Git. If it's every day you want to commit something, commit one or two things to Git. Even if it's not even working, you just commit. That can even give you a step into the interview board or next level interview. Then another thing is um, is what we call um, what is it again? Um, I don't want to use complex, uh, but they help me here. There's a feeling you have that you're not good, but you're good. Um, um, inferiority complex. No, not complex. complex. It's a word for it. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's a no. word for it that you feel that you're not good. You see other people, but you're actually very good. But because you just your mind tells you that you're not qualified to be there. Ah. What's that English? It's an English word for it. Yeah, they will, they will come back to us. <laughs> it will come back. You understand? Yeah. So don't don't feel you're not good. Way you are good. You're good. You are. Don't let your mind tell you that you're not good. As long as you're doing one thing, you're learning every day, you're practicing, you're giving time to what you want to become. You will get to that. This the imposter that time syndrome. Come. Yes, imposter syndrome. Thank you, buddy. Imposter syndrome. It's it happens. You know. Take time to read about it so that you can liberate yourself of that thinking. I had to do that for myself. Mm. All right. Thank you for that question. Thank you very much for that question. Uh, we have. Do you want? Do you have a follow-up question to that, or are you good? I'm good. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. So we have another question, um, and this one I think this one is very easy. Uh, the person asks, where do I fit in as someone that is proficient in Dynamics, um, CRM, products and process development review or financial products? So this person already has some skills um, in CRM, in product and process uh, development. So the person wants to know where best uh, do you think, do you guys think he or she fits into? Yeah, also, you, you take this. Uh, <laughs> okay, so okay, I, do you want me to take it? <laughs> both of you have developed the financial product. All right, so no, no problem then. Both of you yeah. have developed so, the financial product, so you can anybody can take it. 
so you need to realize that dynamic CRM in terms of popularity is also not, is going to go down over a period of time, right? Uh, you need to start adding more things to the skills that you already have. I'm not sure where your interest lies, but the fact that you already have dynamics is fantastic, right? But there's much more that you can do. So for example, if your interest lies in project management, become a Scrum Master, get all those certification for uh, Scrum and all of that. Um, I'm not sure your best part is for you to be a Microsoft stack person. That used to work maybe 15 years ago, right? Where you'll be MCSC, MCP, all of those kind of things. But if that is your, and of course, enterprise is still looking for that. But because of the advent of open source, 10 years ago, enterprise were still fighting about whether or not they will adopt open source. Today, it is no longer a question. But the point is that even if you're adopting open source, you want to ensure that there's enough support for you and so on. So you can carve a niche for yourself, either from a product development side, where you can do Agile, Scrum Master, get certified and all of that. Or if you want to be a solutions, um, I don't know how much experience you have, you can look at something like solutions architect. Um, and solutions architect requires at least 10 years experience. Typically, you can't even get to graph if you don't have 10 years experience. And you can add many different things to, to your survey. So what a solutions architect is, is a generalist at an experience level, which is that, oh, you know something about everything. So you can say to the business that this is the one we should use because of this, our own unique business objective, right? So it depends on, I need more information to be able to advise. Really, if you're on the call, you can unmute to give us more information. Are you just getting in the field? You already have a lot of years of experience. What level are you really? And then I may be able to help for that, but at least hopefully I've been able to help from both directions. Okay, let me, let me add to that. Again, our advice, your softwares are not what you are. It's the skills that you have that is, um, that stands you out, not softwares. So if I ask what's your proficiency level in dynamic CRM, how will you give me the answer? If I ask, what is what do you do as a product process development review of another product? So it's 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 a, it's very vague. Like, but let's say maybe you want to add some context to it to help. But um, what I deduce from your interest here could be you could be a product manager. So you could do further to understand what product management is and grow towards that with your background. You understand? So if you're using CRM dynamics, that means you. You've, you've done analytics of softwares of, of things in the office or something, you know process, you know how to document process, develop process. So that means your journey can be a product manager journey. So if you want to provide more context at Demola, please do. But from what I yeah, see from your, from your question, product manager may I be think Demola, can you please unmute yourself and just provide context so that um, the experts can point you in the right direction. Maybe but the mic is not uh, not working. Any other question? This already if you unmute, you can take him later. Mori. Okay, so um, as we begin to unwind, there's a question. You know, so someone asks if if you were to pick someone to join your team, Ottobong and uh, Mr. Buddy, if you are picking, um, if you have a pool of people to pick to join your team, what are the skills you'll be looking out for um, to join any of your team as, as a software okay. developer or as a developer okay. team? What are, the, what, are, what, are, what, what do you look out for, what technical skill and non-technical skill? What would you be looking out okay. for? All right, so when, after I've assessed your CV, and after I have, uh, because everybody will be writing the same thing you're writing. After I've accessed your skill, what I will look at is if you're a learner, that's what I will look at. I will know if you're a learner when I ask a few questions. I will know if you're a learner. That's only, that's, it's just important for me because I don't want to train someone on the job. I want someone who will be challenging me in the things he has seen, in resources he has read, you understand? I, I'm a reader, so I, 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 I see the way Google, Google run their processes. Being able to, and I actually learned this in Sterling Bank. 
when we start, when we're building Spectra, um, they, they grouped a lot of people together, sales, credit analysts, business analysts, engineering and product design into a room and it strip off of our grades and ranks and say for innovation to thrive, we need you to, to speak and, and air your views as long as you respect everyone. And that has been the mindset I've been carrying even to where I am. I allow my team to, to challenge me and say, why do you think this is not okay? Why do you think this color shouldn't be used? Why should we go in this direction? So that can only come when you're a learner, not someone that, if you're not a learner, that means you're a garbage in, garbage out. That means you're gonna be saying, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. I don't want to look, I don't want, I don't, I don't like that in my team. Don't follow me. I want to, be, Steve Jobs said it, you don't hire the intelligent people to tell them what to do. You hire intelligent people to tell them what to do. So I lead a team. I want people to challenge me. I want them to also have an open mind that I give them feedback. They don't take it personal. They don't take it um, as criticism. It's a feedback. You see that, it's a feedback. If it applies to you, you assess yourself and adjust. So that's kind of what I'm actually looking for my team. Thank you. Thank you. But you want to throw the heart in the ring? So it depends on the level in which um, I'm bringing the person in. And so I will just give you an insight from a Bincom Dev Center perspective. If you are coming in as intern, then you need to already know the basics of whatever it is. So let's use a software developer, for example. At that level, you need to know the basics. So let's say we are bringing in someone in PHP. You must know how to do to-do list in PHP before you can even get in as from an intern level in a Bincom Dev Center. If you're coming at a trainee level, then you need to know how to use at least one framework, preferably two frameworks, preferably I've built a couple of things, whether it's on your local host or it's online and so on. We don't really care because at the trainee level, what you're doing is that you are using that skill to put things out there, right? At junior associate level, you need to have done at least one project, preferably two projects that you can point to um, some of this does not have to be projects you did um, outside of school. It could be projects you did in, um, even in school, but it can be something on your local house. It has to be something that was actually used by somebody, right? Uh, whether pass or fail, whether it was successful or not. At a senior associate level, then of course, you need to be able to, in addition to everything I've said, you need to be able to lead a small team. Uh, we place a huge premium on um, mentoring, you teaching other people basically. And so you need to be relatable and you need to be someone that is willing to learn, like Otobon said, but also willing to teach. Because we believe that if you are willing to teach someone, you will learn more. Because the worst case is that you realize that, oh, they're asking me something I don't know. Worst case is, say, I'll get back to you. And then you can go and ask the person you are learning from. To, to say uh, they asked me this question and I could not figure it out. Do you know, right? Eventually somebody would know and you would have learned from that process as well. So um, yeah, so be a good learner, but also be willing to share the knowledge that you have. And there are many ways for us to know that, uh, even if you just present me your CV. Okay. Thank you very much. Um... Someone is asking what language is best for me to start with to be able to do back end Python and front end and be good at all practically, right? Um, before I allow Badi to answer that question, I would say to be good practically takes a lot of practice. Um, so whatever language you are most comfortable with, um, starting with, just make sure you are putting in the work. You are practicing daily, you are reading, you are studying, and you're asking intelligent questions, right? So, buddy, what, what language would you, um, as an expert, as a thought leader, you know, someone wants to learn, uh, what language is best to start with to be able for, to- For backend, uh, I, I, for, wait, wait, if Python is a language, so you've already picked a language, if you are looking for, yeah. uh, well, if you've already said Python, then Python is a language, if that's what you want to go into. For me, I-, I, I yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I was thinking 
I was thinking you advise on what language they would um so, pick so for this, is, and back end. Yeah. this is my own idiosyncrasy and um it may not be don't you it may not be hundred percent um hundred percent true but the way I see it today is that if you are looking at back end development the easiest thing to start with is PHP and the reason for that is that there's a lot of resources already from a PHP perspective. Of course, Node.js is coming up. And so you can either choose either between PHP and Node.js. Um, if you're looking at front end, then focus today on JavaScript, right? Of course, for you to get to JavaScript, you have to have learned HTML well, and not just base HTML, HTML5, and then uh, um, CSS3. I uh, know you need to know that very well. And then of course, jump on JavaScript as well. In Nigeria, most people, I advise most people to not just leave themselves as either front-end or back-end, uh, but just be a full-stack developer. Because if you are probably in Nigeria, it's like I said, Nigeria generalist is better. Um, and because you sort of have like a wide range to pick from. But over a period of time, of course, you need to then have an expertise, either front-end or back-end, or as you grow uh, full-stack. Um, yes, yeah, so I think I picked, did I answer that uh, very well? But yeah, you can use Python for ERP as well. You, using things like Django, you can use Python for ERP, but we prefer uh, a Python background um, in things like data science and uh, data analysis and all of that. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Badi. Um, we have five more minutes. If you have any question, please drop it quickly, right? But as we begin to round up, um, I, I will start asking for final word from our um, presenters today, from my experts in the room today, right? And I'm asking for, for last word from a direction of projection, looking at um, technology space or looking at your own particular space in the next one year, what, what are the projections that you think will come true? Uh, how do you advise that we, we position ourselves for those kind of projections? So uh, be it in the product design space, you know, a lot mm. of evolution is happening. What are you studying? What trend are you seeing? And how do you mm. advise that we position ourselves uh, for these? Mm, okay, so good question. Thank you, Modi. So um, I just found out that um, the borderlines across the globe is actually diminishing when it comes to product design, UX design as well. Companies are outside Nigeria hiring people in Nigeria to solve problems and remote has even made it easy to, for that to happen. So for UX, UI design, as long as humans are involved, it's still a, a, a place that is still trending. I don't know yet if it's going to come down in one or two years, but the way it's going, then even in Nigeria, because you've not even tested, you've not even gotten to the, it's what we call UX maturity. I've not seen a company in Nigeria yet, except the likes of PhotoWebs and the unicorns in Nigeria. Um, if I should give them a UX maturity level, I would say level four out of one, in a scale of one to five. But other companies in Nigeria, I've not seen anyone that has even crossed three yet perfectly. So UX is still something that um, is still good for you to go in. In fact, at UX is something you need to even read and understand principle and be good at it and be good at it. Then you are uh, designing is just a piece of it. Um, another thing that is looking very good is when it comes to designing products is no code. I mentioned it, but they had mentioned it. I mean, Webflow, if you don't know to call Webflow, Webflow designer, I can design my prototypes and deploy it as an app for someone to use without even using all this prototyping tool. So I mean, and you can build a website from it. I can even plug in a, a table, a no code tool, and Zapier and make a dynamic website without writing a single line of code. So to all the engineers in the room, look at Webflow, look at Zapier, look at a table, and look at Excel. <laughs> Excel is a very powerful tool. Know how to create macros in Excel. A very powerful tool as well. You can even use those, those four things and build a product out without writing a single line of code. So you can look at it up. So no code, 
UX, UI, product design, is still something that will still be ahead in the near five years. If Nigeria has not scratched the surface, scratched the surface yet, it's still a very valuable line to go into. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, buddy, you want to take a shot at that? Um, so I'll just take a shot from the other side of things, which is product development. The world is trying to build as many products as possible, and we're using a methodology called Agile. Um, and with Agile are things like Scrum, Extreme Programming, and so on. These are things that you should start picking up uh, in terms of, in addition to your core expertise, it will become a generalist skill. You will still you'll start finding the fact that uh, um, when they are recruiting, they will say that oh, you need to have worked in an agile environment before, because most organizations, if not all of them, are now transitioning to agile. Those that are, those that were late to the party and those that were early to the party, particularly with uh, tech. So please, just whether you are a developer, whether you are product manager, whether you are what's in it, get familiar with the agile methodology. Um, particularly Scrum, which is the most popular implementation of it, um, particularly extreme programming, if you're a developer, get used to some of those things because you will be asked of those experience in the near future, if not already. Things like peer programming, um, uh, things like, um, yeah, things like that. So yeah, that's something that I see happening within the next one year. Um, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you for being a part of today's conversation. Um, we, as we begin to wind down, I like um, Autobahn to drop his um, social media handles. Where can we find you, uh, Mr. Bade? You do the same, so that we can continue the conversation online in our, at our convenience. Uh, I see that uh, I did the mother has come back with more details to say he has two years experience in dynamic CRM and has done two years in process and product review. But I also think uh, what Autobahn said is uh, still speak true to even with the information he has shared. So maybe with, with um, um, more private conversation, right, more clarity will be given. So at Autobahn SK on Twitter and Autobahn uh, Coco on um, LinkedIn, right? Autobahn is okay. Uh, I made a mistake then the Twitter. Okay. It's oh, okay. Yeah. Why for body you can speak to body or connect to body at um at with body shemo at body shemo across um all social media platform Twitter, um Instagram, and body at shemo on LinkedIn. Right. You can connect and let's keep the conversation going on. Let's build a community or let's um from this conversation. Remember what one thing stood out. For learners, for freshers, you have to have a community around you, people that you can ask questions. And right on this call are two people that have invested their time, their energy, resources in building out fantastic careers. So you can always ask them questions, but please, please, and please, and please don't waste your time. <laughs> they are very busy people. Make sure you've done your homework, make sure you've done your research and uh, before you approach them with uh, questions, right? So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for making it. Uh, this session will return again uh, the third Saturday in May. Uh, we'll have the next edition of ICT Career Talk. If this has been impact. Is there anything about being from the center? Or no? Sorry. No. Okay. So, uh, I don't think so. If this has been helpful, please tell your, your friends, your parents, guys in your community uh, to join in. Uh, third Saturday of May. This has been brought to you by Binkup Dev Center. Binkup Dev Center is a platform, it's a community of uh, people, developers who are building talent and building products, right? And connecting people to uh, internship, connecting people to uh, where they can get resource, uh, where they can get materials, right? There are two products lined uh, that we have at Binkup Dev Center. We we'll have, for beginners, we have the Binkup Academy where you can learn in, in the space of two to three months, you can learn uh, the beginning uh, class and intermediate class of various programming language. You can check on the website to find out which appeals most to you. And we also have the Bincom Global Tech Program for uh, the advanced guys who are looking to transition between or 
who are little transition between um, jobs or looking looking for new talents or looking to even migrate. Um, we have uh, the immigrants platform also. So take advantage of these and many more. Uh, just go to Bincom. Uh, more information on the platform. But I don't know if I'm missing out any any information that should be shared in this platform. Okay, I think that that will be all. But please continue the conversation on Twitter uh, using the hashtag Digital Tech, right? Um, um, ask questions, drag more people into the conversation. This is how we'll grow. This is how uh, we'll learn. And this is how we'll start building partnership and leveraging on each other's skills and um, uh, talents. My name is Moody, Moody, Moody Agaboru, and uh, I lead um, the project management team at Social Lender, right? And it has been my pleasure, you know, bringing this hosting to this edition of the Bincom ICT Career Talk. Please. Um, without any further questions, do have a fantastic weekend and a beautiful month of May ahead. Thank you very right. much. Everybody. Thank you, Modi. Thank you, everyone, for, for tuning in. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank you, Autobahn. I appreciate it. All right, people. Thank you. Have a good day, everyone.